Hey guys, I'm Brugley, and today I bring you part four of the top 10 most terrifying backrooms levels. And the first three parts will be linked in the description below. If you want to go check them out before this one, you don't have to. I think you're going to love it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Let's get into it, shall we? Backrooms level 148, aka the living level, is classified as a class 5B, which means it's unsafe, unsecure, and has environmental dangers. Really bad environmental dangers. So just based off of its name, you can tell that this level feels almost like it's alive, because it has this very weird ability to change itself in shape, size, and even change all objects inside of itself. And this level makes those changes happen whenever it senses movement. Even movement as small as your footsteps can make the level warp and change itself. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, what does this mean? Well, why does the level change itself? Well, no one really knows, of course, but the main theory is that this level is some sort of intelligent entity. And not only does the level have intelligence, it uses that intelligence to manipulate and actively do things with malicious or bad intentions. So it uses 100% of its intelligence to try to hurt wanderers that get sent here. One person even claimed that the level talked to them with an actual voice, but who knows if that's true, because people could just go insane in the back rooms and start hearing stuff but i think it is true you're about to hear why so there are two different states that this level can be in the first is called the basic state and the second is called the alarm state in this basic state the level looks like a bunch of randomly put together halls and open rooms and corridors that are made out of concrete or concrete blocks and some concrete staircases, as well as some random voids that are out of the walls, but pretty much it's just a labyrinth of claustrophobic concrete hallways. And an interesting note is that even in this basic state, things like Smiler repellent and other useful substances have no effect here. They don't even work. It's like the level suppresses them. The next state is the alarm state, and during this alarm state, the level is at its most dangerous part. This is when the entire thing is awake and and it's causing the most chaos. If you remember when I said earlier that the level might be an entity with intelligence, yeah, this alarm state is when the entity wakes up. If you're running around the level or you're walking loudly, the entity will be able to sense your vibrations and will change the room or hallway or staircase into something dangerous and even deadly to try to trap you or unalive you. On top of this level being angry towards you and actively trying to unalive you during the alarm stage, the lights are also turned off. So that's just fun. And it gets even worse. Just wait till the traps section of this video. The best thing to do during this alarm stage is to just sit down somewhere in the smallest and most enclosed space you can find. That way the level can't hear your vibrations or your footsteps or anything. And then you can just wait it out. Both the basic state and the alarm state can last anywhere from a few hours to several days so it's advised that no one should come to the level without proper supplies or you know just don't come to the level at all and you won't have to worry about it as i said earlier the level is called the living level and it's for more reasons than what i just told you yes the level can do even more than hunt you and try to change itself to hurt you even more and i'm going to explain why right now it can also feel things and communicate with you in weird ways. One documented way is that the level can write on its own walls in English to the Wanderer. When this happened, it was at its basic state and it wasn't attacking the Wanderer, so it's unknown why it tried to contact that person, but yeah. In another sick and twisted example of this level just being plain mean, it also manifests fake exits in its walls in the form of the Mimic Entity, which is just a fake door that can lead to a high fall or to a void where you're doomed to be there forever. And these doors are random and they're unmarked, and if you go in them, the Mimic Entity will consume you, uh, so I just recommend not opening any doors here. The level has no actual vision or eyes or anything like that, and it seems to only be able to find people and objects through vibrations. So your best bet is to move slowly and carefully and to make as little noise as possible to get out of here alive.
Now is the trap section of the video, and I'm going to be going over the specific level traps that this entity and intelligent thing tries to put you in. The first one is called the Flood, and it happens in random hallways and random rooms and corridors, but the level pretty much floods that hall or room with freezing cold water all the way to the ceiling with hopes of getting you stuck in it and drowning. So if you hear a rumble or see a rush of water coming, run the opposite way and get as high up as possible. The second trap is called the Squeeze and it's like those rooms that squeeze together slowly except on this level the walls and the ceilings and the floor all close in on each other to try to crush you this crush can happen in hallways and rooms so if it starts happening try to get out of there before you become a pancake the next trap is the swivel, which is where the room or hallway you're in bends and curves like kind of a wringing out of a washcloth. Everything is distorted and curved, and it can hurt you pretty bad if you're not careful. Next is another dangerous trap, where the level introduces mental issues by trying to control your brain and talking to you. Ugh. And then there's the fire trap, where a huge section or the entire hallway you're in is set on fire. <laughs> so yeah, not fun at all. But this might be the most innately dangerous level. There's one person of interest who's stuck on this level named Knox, and he's the one who discovered it in the first place. Now, he's not involved with any backrooms organization like Meg. He's just a guy who was unfortunate enough to get sent here and get stuck. Even though other people have been here and escaped, Knox can't. And since the escape is random, you have no choice over it. Interestingly enough, this level actually seems to talk to Knox more than any other person who's been here, which means the level is smart enough to develop a relationship, which is kind of cool, I guess. There is one base here called the Dome, and it's where Knox lives. Now, the Dome is accessed by tiny crawl spaces which all lead to this small dome-shaped ceiling room. And like I said, this is where Nox stays, and if you can get there, you should be pretty safe. To enter this level, first off, you shouldn't. But if you can't help it, you have to go. You can no-clip through any floor of a basement-type area and be sent here. And to exit, you have to accidentally be no-clipped out. You have no choice. It just randomly happens or it doesn't. And only a few people have been able to do it. So, good luck. First up for the video is called level 981, or False Tranquility. Level 981 is classified as a class dead zone because of a bunch of environmental dangers and an anomalous, powerful entity that lives here that I'll talk about in a second. The level itself looks pretty safe, actually, when you first get here. You'll see a nice scenic sidewalk that has cherry blossom trees on each side and fresh green grass as well. This path goes on forever in forward direction and the backwards direction, so you're just taking a nice stroll in this level right wrong at the beginning you'll think this level is safe until you start to stay here for longer because once you stop looking at those pretty trees you'll notice that you can't actually leave the path to get to the grass so you're kind of stuck on this one sidewalk and that there's an invisible barrier keeping you on this sidewalk you'll also start to feel electricity in the air and this electric field around you and then after about 10 minutes of feeling that stuff those cherry blossom trees will emit a toxin into the air that's extremely dangerous when you breathe in this toxin which you literally will have to because you can't run away you're stuck on the sidewalk you'll start to notice a change in the level a very dark change you could say it's pretty trees and grass in the sky will change to empty trees dead grass and a gray sky and every alive thing from earlier will start to look decayed the nice path you were on will turn into an old wooden plank path and it's rotting and cracking and full of termites after an hour of being exposed to this toxin and on this level you'll start to get very very paranoid about everything the trees will start to look like they're moving around and walking and trying to grab you and the pathway will look different too and scariest of all you'll start to see a figure dashing between trees on each side of the path it's moving so fast that you really can't see what it is but you kind of can just not for sure and this figure is called the pestilence keeper almost nothing is known about this entity's motives or about the entity in general but what is known is that it's a pretty tall humanoid shape that has a huge swarm of bugs that make up the outside of its body the entity is seemingly waiting for you to give up from all the paranoia and craziness that you're experiencing from this toxin and to just lay down and stop moving so it can attack you now once this entity starts dashing around 
everything in the level is starting to go pitch black. The ground is covered in tar and the grass isn't even there anymore. And the sky is brown and black and everything is fully decomposed. And the Pestilence Keeper is slowly walking towards you as the level decomposes around you. Nice. There is no outpost here, obviously. And to enter this level, you have to fall asleep on level 39 under a cherry blossom tree. And to exit, well, good luck finding one. So Backroom's level you cheated is classified as a class dead zone and is very unsafe. And I mean very unsafe. The level also has the presence of lethal entities and on top of that, the properties of the level are constantly changing so it's hard to map how dangerous it is. But as you can tell, it's not going to be safe at all. Now the level physically looks like an old server closet. You know what I'm talking about, you know, those rooms with old server towers and boxes and wires, dust and old computers and that kind of stuff everywhere. This level is pretty much a prison for people who try to cheat their way through the backrooms levels. And I'll tell you what that means in the exit portion of the video. But this level is so dangerous because if you move or mess with any of the clutter here, you will instantly fall over unalived. Like you will literally just fall over and not be alive. On the spot, no questions asked. And if you think you're going to be smart and try to no clip through a wall or a floor, well then you'll instantly be sent to the void level if you do that. And that isn't even close to the worst part of what can happen here. Within just five minutes of being here, the cheater, or you, because the person in this level is always referred to as the cheater, will start to notice the level itself changing a bit. Parts of the ceiling will start to collapse on top of you, and entities will start to pour in the room from the roof. As the time passes even more to 10 minutes, even more of the ceiling will fall open, and it opens up more opportunities for entities to jump right on top of you. If you somehow make it to the 20 minute mark, you'll see the electronics start to literally explode. Computers, monitors, servers, wires, all of it is just blowing up and causing fire to spread throughout the entire area. At this point, the level has fire, entities, a collapsing ceiling, and you will pass away if you touch or move anything. Cool. After around the 30 minute mark of being in the level, the power will completely go out and it'll be pitch black besides the light that the fire brings. At this point, a set of doors will also be opened up randomly, which you better run to those doors before it gets worse because if you don't, the room's gonna combust and blow up. So, and that room that is about to blow up that you're hopefully running out of was called the main room. But now that you left this main room, you will be entered into a maze of winding and turning hallways. These hallways are very claustrophobic and they have arcade systems throughout them. And while you're making your way through these hallways and walls and everything, these entities and that fire from the main room will follow you out and chase you. After an hour of being in this terrible level, if you're still alive, you'll need to run around the hallways until you find a quarter laying somewhere on the ground. And when you find that quarter, you have to run and find the nearest arcade machine to put the quarter inside of. Once you do that, you'll be given the ability to leave the level and go back to where you entered from as sort of a retry at the back rooms. But if you don't put the quarter in, well then a smiler is probably gonna eat you. Speaking of entities like smilers, the main ones here are smilers and skin stealers, but there are also some other entities that are unique to the level, like the server boxes themselves. Now they aren't just technology servers like from real life, they're some kind of sentient entity. There's also other unidentified entities that chase you around that aren't like any other ones. Even if they were though, it would be kind of hard to see what they were because you're running around for your life through a maze of hallways. I think the last thing you're going to be worried about is looking what entities are following you. Now this level calls you a cheater for a reason, because it's like a sick form of punishment for people who try to cut corners in the back rooms or cheat their way through it. For instance, one reason you might get sent to this level is because you tried to no clip back to reality within the first five levels of the back rooms. So let's say you're on level one and you're like, well, let me just try to glitch back to the real world. 
Well, that's considered cheating to the backrooms, I guess. And if that happens, you'll be sent here to level you cheated. Or if you cheat on an arcade game in level 3999, which is a backrooms exit level, you'll be sent here as well. So don't cheat. And there's other things like that as well. There are other things that can send you here, like trying to open up locked doors or trying to no clip past levels that you don't want to go to. If you're trying to avoid level exclamation mark or something, that'll get you sent here as well. Or at least that's the leading theory, because only a few people have survived this level to tell the story. This level honestly probably deserves to be in the top 5 scariest levels in all of the backrooms, simply for the fact that you can be sent here without even knowing you're going to be. Like imagine just glitching out of reality, falling into the back rooms and learning how to no clip, and then thinking to yourself, you know what, I think it'll be fine if I just try to get back home. All for that to just send you to this level where you have to run around for hours on end avoiding entities and fire just to escape that level and be sent back to the back rooms where you came from. I mean, that's literally one of the worst fates imaginable in all of the back rooms. Let me know what you think down below. Is this level worse than level exclamation mark or is it the same or is it better? Because to be honest with you, I think it might be worse. Level exclamation mark has a straight hallway to run through while this one has curving hallways, fire and more entities. And to get to this level, it's literally just completely random. So I don't know. It's a toss up. To exit the level, you have to survive an hour, then find the quarter I mentioned to put into the nearest arcade machine, and you'll be sent out where you came from. And then hopefully you learned to not cheat in the backrooms, because the backrooms as a whole doesn't like cheaters, apparently. Backrooms level origin is classified as a class dead zone and is unsuitable for life, exceedingly unstable, and there is one really powerful entity here. Now, as I said in the intro, this level might not actually exist physically in the bounds of the backrooms per se, because the connections to it are very wishy-washy and tumultuous at best, and they don't often work. This level is very similar to the void level in that it's an apparent infinite empty space that has almost no light at all. There's also no gravity and no physical objects and you'll just be floating around a black void. Oh, and there's also no oxygen, and I'll explain more on that stuff in a second. This level is what's called a true vacuum, which means there's legitimately no particles of anything in here besides, you know, if there's a person or something. This also means there is no oxygen or air, so unless you can hold your breath or have oxygen tanks with you for some reason, you might meet your end due to suffocation. So, you actually get to this level, level origin, from the void level by staying in there longer than it's recommended for an hour or so, which in turn means that level origin is a very dangerous and unpredictable level due to the fact that a large amount of objects can randomly be no clipped in and out constantly from the void. And since the void is so big and expansive, there could be thousands and millions of objects in there that can just teleport into the level of origin. So theoretically, you could just be floating around level origin and a rogue entity that got stuck in the void could be no clipped right next to you and then eat your feet off or something. I don't know. This is why level origin is indeed considered one of the most dangerous levels of all time. Plus, there are also random rips in the space-time continuum. You know, nothing too crazy. However, it's actually thought that no clipping into one of these rips might send you to reality, but more on that later. Other than the constant stream of things glitching in and out of this area, there's thought to be one single very smart entity that looks over the level and controls it all in some way. And this entity seemingly changes how time itself works. So five seconds in level origin could actually be days out outside of the level. Since there isn't a physical shape to the level that can be seen, like it is in a big square in a big rectangle room or something, it's thought that the shape might be a four-dimensional shape. This would mean objects and stuff will seem to stay in one spot, no matter how far away or how close you get to them. Spooky stuff. On top of that weird stuff, you also won't be able to see any other people that are sent here as well. Even though you'll be able to see almond water bottles, other objects, and entities that get sent here, you won't be able to see actual people, which 
is a weird common phenomenon in the back rooms. So, so far this level is a vacuum void with no oxygen and objects constantly clipping and no clipping in and out that could hurt you. And there's no way to perceive time or space because the level is 4D and controlled by a crazy entity. Now I'm sure you're asking, well how can that get worse? But oh wait, it can. There is a certain anomaly hidden in this level called the doorway, which is an extremely bright rectangle that leaks perfectly white light from inside of it. Now, the structure doesn't seemingly have any depth or dimension to it, it's just a 2D glowing rectangle, but that could also be wrong since the entirety of level origin is 4D and you can't perceive shapes, but this rectangle emits some kind of electromagnetic radiation in bursts. No one knows what's inside the rectangle or what's past it, but it can be assumed that the entity that I've been hinting at lives behind it, and that entity is called the unknown, and now I'm going to explain it. Unknown is a very powerful entity that has the ability to control reality inside of level origin, and possibly even further out into other levels as well. It has mild telepathy and can seemingly choose objects to fly in and out of the void and also choose where they go. Unknown can also alter time and space however it wants, and it can make hours last seconds and vice versa. And these powers I just said are thought to be just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the full reach of powers the entity might have. It could have a lot more. It's also thought that the entity is tied to some deeper roots in the back rooms and maybe even the creation of it. But all that's just speculation right now, and no one knows for sure. There's a log on this level entry page where some wanderer got sent here and unknown said he had to unalive the wanderer due to a promise. So whatever that means. Creepy stuff. Why did this entity promise he would unalive wanderers? I don't know, man. There are no outposts here, of course, and to enter, you have to be in the void for a long time and get chosen to be sent here by unknown, and to exit, there's probably no true way. But it's thought that you might be able to get sent to real life if you no-clip into one of those random space-time continuum vacuums that I talked about. Just a theory, though. It could be totally wrong. Or it could be another fake exit, which the backrooms loves to tease us with. My suggestion is to not go to that white rectangle because I don't believe it's a real exit, but who knows? So, Level Terror Dreams, as a whole, is classified as a Class 5 difficulty and is completely unsafe with a dangerous environment and dangerous entities, both. The level is cut up into different sections or dreams that each do different things but are each terrifying in their own way. The level entirely is different to each person who gets here because everybody has a specialized place from their memories that this level takes place place as. The environment will feel strangely familiar, and the objects inside will seem familiar as well. The level has no noise, and everything is muted, including your breathing and footsteps, and the only thing you'll be able to hear is whatever you're thinking in your head. For now, at least. Trust me, you'll be able to hear stuff later. Each door, window, and hallway in this level leads to a different dream or sublayer, or a crazier part of the entirety of this level. And as I said, Said, the physical place you'll be in is different for everybody. It might be one person's childhood home, or it could be someone else's elementary school they went to. It just depends on what memory this level chooses to manifest itself as. But what doesn't change is that the deeper you go into this level, through the doors, through the hallways, through the windows, the further you get to the center of it, the darker and stranger and more terrifying it gets. It is imperative, so important that you don't stay in each of these rooms and hallways ways for long, because just after 10 minutes of being in one, you'll start to see shadows in the corner of your eyes, and you'll feel vibrations of someone walking near you and talking to you. You won't be able to hear the actual words they're saying, because everything is completely silent here, obviously, but you'll be able to feel the vibrations in your bones. That's right, you'll be able to feel vibrating things like someone was talking to you in your bones. That's scary. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. At this point, the level will start to get more distorted, and the walls and the ceilings and the other objects will begin to morph into very weird shapes, kind of like this dream is collapsing. If there's lights on in your level, then they'll start to get really dim, and they'll eventually go dark. 
and the objects here will start to get worn down and old looking and they'll all become covered in blood. That's right, in blood. And those voices that are making the vibrations will start to get louder to the point where they're so loud that you can hear words being said to you by whatever's hiding in the darkness. Only some words though, because most of the words are in an unknown language. These shadows that hide on this level are referred to as nightmares, and they hide in the darkness of the level. Only seen dashing quickly from dark spot to dark spot to avoid being seen. But sometimes you will be able to catch a quick glimpse of them in your peripheral vision, and then you turn over and you see nothing there. At this point in the level, the deeper you go, the worse off you'll be, because now the rooms and hallways are going to get even darker and more unnerving, and more things will be seen hiding out in the shadows. You still won't be able to fully hear the noises or voices, but you'll be able to pick up on those vibrations to understand some stuff. The nightmare entities themselves, they're typically over 7 feet tall, and they move so fast that it's hard to tell if they float or run. Doesn't matter though, because their main goal is to drive you insane, <laughs> I think they do a pretty good job and they do drive you insane by doing what I said earlier they hide in the dark spots of the level and they scare you but they scare you specifically in order to make you run deeper into this maze of hallways and rooms they want you to open as many doors as you can and get lost and go deeper and deeper into this dream level because the deeper you go the crazier you get there's also an extremely dangerous sub level to this level called the blood moon and it seemingly brings random people to it and they have no choice in the matter at all the blood moon is a dark red sky with a red floating orb in the center of it everything is red the ground the vines the leaves the sky everything and this area has even more nightmare entities living in it except these here are more aggressive and they attack on sight rather than just trying to scare you and make you run away but back to the main part of the level after about the hour long mark the entirety of the physical level you're in is not anything like it was when you first got there because at the start you could kind of recognize it it might have looked like your childhood home but now it's just completely distorted and weird looking and creepy and dark and there are things jumping in and out of the shadows around you and forcing you to move into certain directions that they want you to go eventually they will attack you. I think this level in and of itself is cool, but I also think that it has a deeper meaning than just being a terrifying level. To me, it kind of symbolizes the back rooms as a whole. You know, the idea of being sent to a place that's familiar, but you've actually never been. A place that seems infinite, but might not be, and being stuck here with no escape. Like both this level and the back rooms as an entirety are like this. Not to mention that the nightmare entities torment you into running deeper into the level, just like you can be sent deeper into the back rooms by being scared from a level or an entity. It all connects in a really disturbing, morbid way, and I think it's pretty cool. Backrooms level 11.3, or the Red Light District, is classified as a class 5 difficulty and is very unsafe and unsecure, and it is infested with entities. But not the normal ones, I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. But it's always good when a level starts out that way, isn't it? This level is a dark and sinister and cryptic corrupt cityscape that's thought to be located somewhere near the regular level 11. The level itself looks like a huge city with a creepy red glow coming from the sky. Even the actual air itself in this level is toxic and it can lead to visual and audio hallucinations. The middle of the city has tall skyscrapers and bridges and the outside of the city has warehouses and apartment buildings and other private areas all of which are abandoned and the deeper you go into the level the denser and more convoluted and confusing the concrete maze of buildings becomes and this maze of buildings can be extremely confusing because you know the air is toxic and the streets are like a maze and entities are swarming you all this adds up to a pretty confusing level but trust me when i say that it gets worse the weather and the temperature of this level can range anywhere from being sweaty and muggy to being freezing and snowing in just a few minutes that's right it can go from literally 100 degrees to like 20 degrees during the snowstorms and heat waves there is sometimes red lightning that strikes in the distance over the city this sudden change in weather and the lightning can also be very dangerous if you stay out in it for too long 
Now, so far, every building that's been searched into has been completely empty and barren, almost like it's been picked through already before, so no one knows if there was once any people living here or if it's just been taken over by others already. But as far as we know, the level just got discovered. So Now, as I said in the beginning, this level is infested with entities, but it's mainly just one single entity called the Servants. Now, these Servants are semi-humanoid creatures Creatures that have ashy dark skin with red colored eyes. They seem to have some kind of social class system where some are dressed better than others and some are less aggressive than others, some live in better buildings than others, but the servants are called the servants because they serve a more powerful race of entity called the ambassadors, which I'm gonna make an entire entity short on, but pretty much the ambassadors are these sentient floating alien-like cubes that are very, very old and smart, and they can control things in very strange ways. Like, these things go deep into the history of the backrooms, and they seem to have been there since the existence of it, and they control the servant entities here. Most of the servants here are not instantly aggressive when they see a person, but if you get in their way or you make them mad or something, then, yeah, they're gonna get mad, and they're probably gonna chase you. And when they do get angry, they will try to lure you or chase you and corner you into a dark alleyway and trap you there. And when you're stuck in this alley, way they use your fear and your paranoia to harm you into being so scared that you can't move and once you're that scared they'll then attack and they'll restrain you but they won't fully unalive you in fact they will take you somewhere alive no one knows where it is but the wiki dot entry literally says quote do not be taken alive end quote maybe they take humans and transform them into whatever they are or something like that either way it's pretty terrifying to think what they do to people who they capture. There's a recovered audio log on the entry that might give some clues onto what the servants do with people or what they even are. So go check that out if you're interested. It's pretty cool. And in the audio, there is an ambassador entity that talks to the person and it says, you have two options. You can pledge loyalty and serve or you can try to resist and be enslaved as a mindless tool for eternity. So I'm pretty sure I was right about them capturing humans. It seems like the ambassadors capture people and turn them into these servants to do their bidding for them. It's pretty creepy stuff. It's kind of like doomsday in a way. There's also been really weird books found in this level that talk about a huge thing called the red capital, which apparently is a red rot type of substance that is a curse to all upcoming civilizations. The books also talk a lot about the ancient civilizations of the backrooms and the people that have been here forever, and they show pictures of very weird architecture and people worshipping the ambassadors. Just a ton of really weird, creepy, cryptic stuff. The ambassador cube entities I mentioned earlier seem to go to this one specific building deep into the maze of skyscrapers here. The building has been nicknamed the Embassy, and it's heavily defended by servants, so no one knows what goes on inside of it. All that's known is that a weird hum comes out of it. So this is the back rooms. None of it makes sense. And that's exactly why it's amazing. To enter this level, you can come from level 11, the regular one, by walking to the outskirts of the city and no clipping into a dark alleyway. Or you can find anything that's a little more red than normal in level 11 and no clip through it. To exit, you have to run as far away from the center of the city as possible until you find some sort of bridge that goes over the water. And these bridges are said to lead back to the regular level 11, but there are tons of servants guarding them, so uh, good luck! So level 256 actually has four different versions of its description on the wiki dot, and each version is written by the same wanderer as they discover more and more about the level. And the deeper the explanations go, the creepier and more disturbing the author's explanation gets. So first, I'll start with the top document, which is the first entry. According to this first entry, level 256 is classified as a class pending, and it doesn't have a determined safety yet, but it is unsecured, and it is unknown if any entities are here. In this entry, the level is referred to as level in instead of level 256 because the wanderer didn't know where they were. Physically, the level looks like a huge dark 
tech demo warehouse or a building where computer terminals are just randomly on in this huge dark abyss of a warehouse. The level is completely dark besides the screens, and this is one of the only pictures that was taken by the Wanderer for the first entry. The author doesn't see any bases or outposts, and they don't see an exit either, but they're not freaking out yet, they're just chilling. Just a big dark warehouse full of computer terminals. But they do remember that the level they came from was level 4, so the entrance to this level is from level 4. That is the end of the first entry, let's check out the second one, because things are starting to heat up. For the second entry, Backrooms Level 256 is still classified as a class pending, and its safety is still undetermined. But now the level is officially named Level 256, and not Level N like in the first part. So Level 256 looks like an abandoned tech demonstration and exhibition center, which is a place where tech and new stuff like that is showcased. Except it's dark and it's abandoned and the entire level takes place indoors, maybe. Even though there are windows, and these windows just look outside to a formless and dark black outside. The level's design is kind of modern, and it has sleek tables and some random neon lights around. All of the neon lights, by the way, are blue, which is pretty strange. And all of the doors on this level are locked. Apparently, the wanderer that's writing all this kicked one of the doors open, and there was just a wall right behind it. So it doesn't make sense why there was a door there if there's just going to be a wall behind it. I don't know. The main thing on the level is these terminals with computers on them. The computers have logos and branding from real life video game franchises and tech companies, but none of them have content on the screens that looks like anything from real life. The games and stuff are completely unrecognizable. The different types of screens show static screens, which is the most common type, and then some show really colorful, distorted images of people dancing or walking, like an old music video, and some have really bad 3D rendering demonstrations playing on them, and some of them even have very simple games on them. And these games have no end and no objective, they're just random games, I don't know. And at any given moment, any of the screens can blast really loud, distorted sounds, and then go black completely off. This is pretty common on the level, but if you aren't expecting it, it would be pretty scary. Now there are still no bases here, but the Wanderer at this point is starting to get frantic and thinks that no one is seeing what they're posting, so they're kind of freaking out a little bit. The third entry has level 256 classified as a class 5 difficulty and is unsafe, unsecure, and is infested with entities. Earlier, it was just a class pending. And at this point, this is where the Wanderer that you've been listening to has kind of lost all their sanity. Apparently, they're frantically uploading this third entry because they haven't heard any responses to the previous ones. And they're going crazy because it's so dark and quiet. They say that the terminals are starting to randomly turn on and off like someone's flicking a light switch over and over again and that the screens themselves are just starting to scream like scream loudly at the wanderer yeah i think it's safe to say this person's lost it the wanderer says that it feels like someone or something has been watching them this whole time and it's getting worse the longer they're here they also say that quote the sky is dark, end quote, which is interesting because the level is supposed to take place only inside of a building, but the Wanderer still calls it a sky and says it's dark. Interesting. And that is where the third entry ends. Now for the fourth and the final entry sent by this Wanderer, it's written in four simple words, quote, it's not the sky, end quote. And this is the last picture that was uploaded by this person, which is thought to be the picture of whatever the sky is, or whatever is up above the level looking down. Creepy stuff. So yeah, after all that information from the Wanderer, we still don't really know much. We know that the level is a huge dark area with computer terminals that are controlled by an unknown being or something like that. We also know that there has not been an exit found, and we also know that the screens play noises that are disturbing and terror inducing. And the last thing we know is that the sky of this level isn't actually a sky, it's something else. Let me know what your theories are on this level down below in the comments.
So, Backroom Level 188.8 is classified as a Class 4 difficulty and is very unsafe and unsecure with a high entity count, unlike the pool rooms or the original Level 188. This place is dangerous. The entire sublevel takes place mainly around this open space with windows and hallways around it, which is very similar to the original Level 188 picture. But the main difference is that this level is covered in water. And this water has a nasty secret. There is a disease that hides in the H2O in this level. It is nicknamed the Hydrolytus Plague, and it is very dangerous to humans. It can cause you to literally fall apart after consuming it or long exposure in it, and it's dangerous because the symptoms start out just like a minor sickness. You know, you got a headache, maybe some cold chills, that kind of thing, but then it develops into a full-on crazy disease. Disease, like flesh falling off of you and that kind of stuff. You get the picture. But as I mentioned, the actual level is the pool rooms and level 188 combined. So the level has 188's windows and hallways and walls with the pool room's tile texture on it and the water of the pool rooms as well. Now the floor throughout this sublevel is either fully covered in water or it's partially covered in the water. And the places that are partially covered are very slippery, which makes them still dangerous because you could fall and hurt yourself or something. And then the places that are fully covered in water have the disease in them. So everywhere is dangerous. And just like both of its main levels, this sublevel has a labyrinth of hallways that surround it. And it is in these hallways where you're going to have to be really careful because there are a ton of doors throughout all of them. And these are not just normal doors, they're entities. And if you haven't heard of what these things are, I'll explain real quick. Doors are living creatures that disguise themselves as rooms with fake opening doorways. Now, these entities leave their doors cracked open so people will walk into them. And once someone does walk into them, they'll notice that they're inside of a creature. That's right, the entire room is a fleshy and muscular, nasty mouth. And that's when the acid starts to come out of this thing's tongue. Then you'll be digested. So, uh, yeah, don't go through any doors on the sublevel. On top of door entities, there are also a ton of window entities, which are fake windows that will suck you into them if you get too close. No one knows where you go if a window entity takes you, so it's best to just not go near them, please. Some of the hallways in this sublevel shrink down to be very claustrophobic and tight. And some of them can randomly get deep with water without warning. And it's in these spots where everything gets darker. The deeper you travel around the labyrinth of halls, the smaller, cramped, and more dark the hallways get. And the more entity infested everything gets as well. There's also an event that happens on this level sometimes called the Flash Flood Event. And this is where all the water in this entire sublevel rises up pretty fast without warning. And it'll rise up until the entire level from the floor to the roof. And every hallway, every room, every corridor is filled to the brim with water. So you'll not make it out if you stay in the level during this event. You're going to have to swim or run away as fast as you can to find an exit. And these exits are pretty hard to find. There are two main ones, in fact, and the first one is wandering out in those hallways as far as you can until it eventually starts to gradually change back into level 188. And you'll notice when it does because the water will start to dry up and the hallways will start to get bigger and you won't hear any water or anything like that. But that one's pretty hard since the hallways do get dangerous the further you go into them. But the other exit is to try to find a place to no clip to be sent back to the pool rooms, which is an easier exit, but at the same time, there is not one concrete place to no clip. It's pretty random. So good luck escaping. I think this level hybrid is pretty cool. I enjoy how they merge two different levels into one. And it kind of makes the back room seem even crazier and more mysterious to me. Especially because that leaves the question, how many other levels have combined? Is there a level 0 and a level 666 level combined somewhere? Is there a level 0 and level exclamation mark somewhere? Pretty interesting to think about. Backrooms level 790 is classified as a class dead zone because of its environmental hazards, mainly. But there's also the chance for an anomalous and powerful entity to be here. We just don't know. The level itself is pretty deceiving because it looks nice and safe. 
It's a calm-looking British-style village made out of nice little houses and shops. But the level's looks are deceiving, because underneath this pretty exterior, the level has a goal of unaliving you through a bunch of accidents or crazy scenarios that are literally just insane, and I'll explain those in a second. This entire village is always covered in snow and ice, and it gets covered again every day by a snowstorm that pops up and causes a blizzard. The houses themselves look like British brick architecture, but inside the houses, uh, they seem to have surprisingly modern appliances and floors and furniture. They also have central heating, electricity, and water. The constant temperature of the level is 28 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 2 degrees Celsius, which is really cold if you didn't know. The ground underneath the snow is covered in very, very slick ice, and this ice can cause people to slip and fall if they aren't careful. The main way you could fall would be if you were trying to travel from building to building, and speaking Speaking of buildings, there are a few specific ones that I want to talk about. There are churches, which are pretty uncommon. There are detached houses, which is one of the most common. Then there are semi-detached houses and terraced houses, which are the two main buildings that you'll see the most of. The rarer buildings are corner stores and tea shops, and these are sprinkled throughout the level, but they are extremely rare. The tea shops are by far the rarest, and if you find it, you're very lucky because they are the best place to stay inside of and wait out the blizzards and other things to try to hurt you. The tea shops also have cool things inside of them like almond water and heat and even Wi-Fi. So that's pretty cool. And as I just said, these tea shops are the chillest and best place to ride out the blizzards that hit all the time. And the only problem is that they're the rarest. A weird quirk about all the buildings on this level is that if any part of them breaks off or cracks or something like that, it will automatically fix itself two days later. But the inside and the outside will look completely different. There'll be different colors, be different layouts, different designs, and even the objects inside the buildings won't be the same either. So it could get pretty confusing if you're trying to travel through the level. Now, I bet you're asking yourself, how is this level a class dead zone when it sounds like a nice, pretty winter wonderland? Well, it's because the level tries to unalive you through seemingly accidental methods. And these accidental methods increase in opportunity each hour that you stay here. The longer you're here, the higher chance of something bad happening is. And speaking of accidents, let me explain what those are. The first method of causing accidents is through snowstorms. Now these are a daily thing, and if you go inside the blizzard or inside the snow, it just instantly unalives you right then and there, like you just drop down. The next method is by roof tiles or shingles. Older looking buildings will shoot off their roof tiles and try to hit you in the head when you get near them. Apparently, the tiles can hit you so hard that they literally unalive you from blunt force trauma. That is literally insane. The next method is through black ice, which is the type of ice that's on roads and sidewalks. And this is the stuff that'll cause you to slip and fall and maybe even hit your head if you're not careful. Now, a really strange method that this level uses is carbon monoxide poisoning. And this happens if you try to turn on ovens and appliances inside of some of the houses. Not all of the houses do this, but some of them do. And if an oven or something is turned on, it will release the monoxide really fast and you probably won't be able to make it out of the house in time. Man, that's dangerous. Now, the last four methods are pretty self-explanatory and those are food poisoning, electrical fires, random branches falling down and hitting you, and huge openings from the ground forming for you to fall into. But as you can see, the level does not want you here. I mean, it's literally trying to get you in every way imaginable. I mean, literally like Looney Tunes type of goofiness. Each one of these methods is used by the level with the sole goal of getting rid of you. Or it could be that the level is controlled by a really powerful being who can manipulate things like the ground or ice or something. Either way, the level is really dangerous, even though it looks like a snow globe city. There are no bases here, and to enter the level, you can come from the factory on level negative 7, even though you shouldn't come here, and to exit, well, sorry, but there hasn't been one found yet since the level goes out of its way to get rid of everyone who comes here. Good luck!
Backrooms level 159 is classified as a class 3 difficulty and is unsafe and unsecure, very unsafe by the way, with a medium entity count. But the entities that are here can be pretty dangerous. The level itself looks like an old style American town that's around 1900 miles in size, or 3000 kilometers. So it's pretty big, like a really big town. For reference, Phoenix, Arizona is only 830 kilometers in size, and London is only 1700 kilometers in size. So it's literally twice as big as London. Cool. The architectural style of the town is a late 80s to early 90s American style, and most of the buildings here fit that theme. The ground is very flat, except for a few spots, and there are also a few spots with trees and shrubs dotted throughout the entire area. And all of the trees and stuff are dead because it's always snowy and the ground is frozen most of the time, with snowstorms being very common. This level actually seems to be always snowing, but the weird thing is it never gets deeper than four centimeters even though it's always always snowing no clue where the snow goes or how it doesn't accumulate anymore but it doesn't it also doesn't even matter if there are clouds in the sky or not because it'll snow either way no clouds daytime whenever which is pretty spooky if you ask me it hovers around freezing in the outdoor parts of the level, but when you're inside the buildings, it's typically around 10 degrees warmer, which isn't much warmer, but at least you won't freeze. The level has a wide range of normal entities that are found in other backrooms levels, like wretches, hounds, and that kind of thing. And there are also some very dangerous entities that are specific to this level only, and I'll get into those in the entity section of the video. But for now, I want to talk about the unique locations and and environments that this level has to offer uh, because they're insane like literally insane gas stations are the first location that I want to talk about and these buildings should not be entered or even walked up to because of how dangerous the creatures can be that spawn inside of them the shelves inside of these stores actually have some food and stuff on them like real-life gas stations but again don't go in no matter how tempting it is so playgrounds are the next location and they look like your normal play sets from real life Except these are not located inside of parks or fields, like you would see here. They're in completely random places, like on top of buildings or just right in the middle of the road. And no matter where they are, there's always tables and mulch surrounding them. And it's inside of these playgrounds that the snow melts on contact with the ground. No one knows why, it just does. The creation pits, or just the pits, are the next place in the level, and this is where it gets crazy. These are huge bunkers that have been found underground throughout the level. They were discovered because of cylinder-shaped air vents sticking out of the ground. And when they were entered, a strange discovery was made. These bunkers, or pits, are full of extremely advanced technology that's unlike anything anyone's ever seen before. There are fluid tanks that have weird creatures in them. There are computers that are self-sufficient and doing things on their own. These computers create entities. Yes, you heard that right. They create and produce entities. Almost like a 3D printer, but for biological stuff. After one of these entities is fully done and created, the pod of liquid that they were in will be launched out of the bunker into the sky, and then it'll crash somewhere else in the level. Interestingly enough, across this level, there's been bones and full skeletons of primates just laying around or partially buried, which is very cryptic and dark if you ask me. Did the creator of this technology just wipe out all the primates that were here, or did they get primates from Earth to do experiments on? to create these entities? Who knows? The last two locations are pretty simple. One is the Forgotten Mall, which is a large mall with different off-brand stores inside of it that has clothes and that kind of stuff. And you can get these clothes, but you have to buy them, actually. And if you don't pay for them at the cash register, then they'll just disintegrate in your hands when you walk out the door. And lastly, there's the Plaque of Creation, which is a golden plaque located inside of a small outpost here that says, quote, We've made a magnificent discovery, but also have created a mind so horrifying, so powerful, that it could best the brightest we had to offer. As fate may also have it, we are likely dead. Though to the ones left behind, I have but one thing to say. Please don't fly too close to the sun. Uh, yeah. 
whatever that means. I think someone messed up by creating these entities and technology, but uh, who knows. Now I'm going to talk about these specific ones to this level. Now there are six types of them. There are humanoid entities, semi-humanoid entities, non-humanoid entities, passive ones, actively malicious entities, or AMEs, and empowered entities. Humanoids are the rarest form to find here, and they seem to almost be human. Not quite, but almost. They have two legs and opposable thumbs, but they just wander around and they seem confused. Then there are semi-humanoid ones, and they're common here. They have the upper body or lower body of a human, but the upper or lower of an animal as well. And they can't talk or communicate, and they really seem awkward and unbalanced, almost like they're a mistake. Non-humanoid entities are ones with no humanoid traits. They hardly have any sentience, and they're aggressive. They're kind of like wild animals. Neutral entities are ones that don't just outright attack you the second they see you. And these are also pretty rare, sadly. Now, actively malicious entities, or AMEs, are ones that go out of their way to chase you, and their entire purpose is to attack you. Not very fun. Lastly, there are empowered entities, which are creatures with these supernatural powers that wanderers have come across. They can't really control these powers because they don't seem smart enough to be able to, but they definitely have them. Like, one could float, but they can't control where they float. Or one could lift certain items and not other items. It doesn't make any sense, but that's how it is. And all of these weird creatures were made from that technology in the bunkers, the computers, and the pods, which is really creepy to think about. There are two bases here. One is a Meg Outpost, and one is called Van Dyra. Meg Outpost has three people that permanently stay there, and the Van Dyra has 300 humanoid and semi-humanoid entities that stay there. Which does show that those semi-humanoids and humanoids are capable of forming society. Which is really creepy because who knows how further they could develop. To enter this very strange level, you can open an ice-covered door from level 1 to be sent here. And to exit, you can find a donut shop in the middle of town to be sent to level 11. Which is what I would try to find instantly to avoid the half-human, half-monster entities here that want to eat my face. That's just me. Alright, thank you so much for watching uh, this video. I hope you did enjoy. I know all of you seem to love the compilations, and I love just dropping one or two of them a month just to give you all a nice long video. Tell me down below which level was your favorite, which level you thought would be the worst to go to. Personally, I think level you cheated would be the worst one to go to because uh, of the reasons you heard in the video. Yeah, you, you know why. You saw. Thank you all so much uh, for the support you give me. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to hop on here with a face cam and just tell you all seriously. Thank you so much. I love and appreciate each and every one of you. If you want to see more of this uh, on <laughs> this face for some reason, uh, go check out my second channel, Tugly. I upload reactions and rants and gaming stuff over there. It's a great time. You all will really enjoy it. And make sure to check out my third channel, Spookly, where I'm going to be doing SCP videos with the Brugly style of editing uh, multiple times a week. So if you want your weekly fix of SCP stuff from me, check it out. Drop a sub, turn post notice on. Thank you all for everything. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.